Thank you, gentlemen. We're coming now towards the end of our conference and it's time now to look forward. While 2020 brought many challenges, um, the sports sector did respond with a number of novel initiatives and new platforms to create sport and physical activity opportunities for people with disabilities throughout Ireland. But as we move towards 2021, what are the opportunities and the challenges that face us? We're joined now by a high-powered group to discuss that, including uh, Jack Chambers, TD, Minister of State for Sport and the Gaeltacht, and also Una May of Sport Ireland, Miriam Malone of Paralympics Ireland, Sarah O'Brien of the HSE, and also um, Neve Daffy, uh, the CEO, of course, of CARA. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you're all very welcome. Minister, can I call on you first, perhaps, to uh, say a few words? Thanks very much, and um, <clears throat> I want to thank Cara for inviting me here today and to ask me for to join this panel discussion. Uh, and I recently met with John, <clears throat> John Morgan and Neve Daffy, and we had a really positive uh, meeting. And the work that Cara does on a daily basis is about creating the life-changing opportunities for people with disabilities through sports and physical activity. And I myself was involved in the Programme for Government discussions and one thing uh, at the heart of government discussions was to prioritise uh, across, across many areas of government the key objectives around, around how we progress the issue uh, and, and sport and people with disabilities. I know from discussions with my officials on the preparation of the Sports Action Plan, uh, one of the key focuses of that is on the issue of inclusion um, and I know that that's a priority as well for the sports leadership uh, group and, and is underpinned in the, the Programme for Government and we need to see ongoing uh, progress in that area. Um, the, this morning has been a really informative meeting and I'm delighted to see that we're seeing some progress but it's clear that we have many challenges and that we must address for people um, <clears throat> with disabilities in sport uh, and I want to assure you as Minister my own support in addressing those challenges. One issue that I'm very aware of is the need for us to better understand why individuals um, who believe in the benefits of sport and exercise feel they are unable to participate the difficulty of access is not necessarily about equipment always or physical infrastructure, but also softer issues such as attitudes and skill sets of individuals providing services or delivering programmes. And I hope that we can work together to improve those attitudes and skill sets and eliminate those, those access difficulties for people with disabilities. And I want to acknowledge the work and ongoing commitment to inclusion that exists right across the sports sector. In particular, I want to thank many of the local sports partnerships for their creativity and innovation and the extraordinary work being done by the sports inclusion disability officers within each of those local sports partnerships. And I also want to thank Dr. Una May of Sport Ireland, who is here on the panel with us today, and everyone in Sport Ireland for the time and dedication that they give in supporting people with disabilities in Irish sport. And just to say as well, we recently announced a new round of sports capital programme, uh, and one, uh, one priority in that is around access and inclusion for people uh, with disabilities. That was priorita prioritised in recent years and it's a key focus of this sports capital programme so that we ensure that accessibility uh, and issues uh, around people with disabilities is a key, is a key issue so that we, we, we have inclusion as a key pillar uh, around different funding streams across government. So I look forward to a very informative discussion uh, with my fellow panel, panel members, Neve, Una, Miriam and Sarah, and I really appreciate the invitation today. Minister, thank you. Um, before we get into the policy issues, just on a personal level, what a time to be appointed <coughs> Minister of State for Sport. What has it been like to, to come into this job at a time when sport was closed down? So I was on mute there. No, it, it's, um, it's, it's been a real challenge and, and I suppose the particularly in, in the context of COVID and how Unfortunately, every governing body and, and uh, every part of sport has been obviously affected by the ongoing pandemic. Um, and who would have thought at the start of this year, I know when we were, when we were in a general election, that we, the pandemic would have had such an impact across so many areas of society. Um, but I'm someone who's grown up in sport as a participant in over the years and many clubs and associations in my own local area. So it's really a, a great honour. Um, and I've met with many sports clubs and organisations who bring a brilliant uh, resilience and hope and focus for next year. Uh, and I fully appreciate how tough it has been for many uh, sports and athletes. And 
while it has a, been a challenging time, um, the, the sector and the voluntary spirit and the community spirit um, has been at the core, I think, of, of what sport is really about. So when there are many sports that might have been able to participate in at a time in the spring, we saw so many of our clubs actually go out and support many vulnerable members of our community and engage in a voluntary capacity. Uh, and even in the last number of weeks where it's been difficult and challenging with public health guidance, sport has tried to maximise what it can do in that context. Uh, and just to say for 2021, where where I think we've 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 a greater ability to to hope and and that next year will be a different year and that's different for sport as well. So with an improving epidemiological position, I'm hopeful that we'll see a lot more sport and, and also sport for people with disabilities uh, return in a really a substantive way. And combining that with the with with the funding, we, we'll we'll hopefully be able to see uh, you know the positive effect of of of, of sport across our society again. Um, but also, what I have noticed as well as Minister is despite many of the formal activities in sport not being able to proceed, we have seen a huge uptake in physical activity and participation actually from spring onwards. And hopefully we can embed that, uh, that increased physical activity and exercise uh, in cycling, running and many other recreation activities that happened during the COVID crisis. So we've actually, we've seen 78% of Irish adults are now walking, for example, for recreation. That that wasn't the case prior to the pandemic. So hopefully we can embed that those changes and and see see an improvement. But I'm hopeful that with the Tokyo Olympic and Paralympic Games postponed next year will be a positive year for the country and, and we see our flag flying over, over there. Um, and a rollback will take months, but it will happen. Um, and we will see greater progress, I think, in 2021 um, for, for the sports sector and and, and I think we have also seen unprecedented government support in the context of capital expenditure, but also current expenditures to ensure we give certainty or to our NGB. So hopefully we not only whilst participation hasn't been the same uh, across many of the sports, we're able to be we're able to see a, a, a you know structural changes in terms of infrastructure and equipment and, and, and they'll stand the test of time to improve access and participation over the coming years ahead. So um, I said, honoured to be here and, uh, and, and thanks again. Okay, talking specifically about inclusion, um, the national sports policy talks about reducing the gradient, making it easier for people with disabilities to gain access to sport and physical activity. How specifically will the, your department address that? Well, one of the one of the key issues that I've identified as minister is is, is that is the fact that unfortunately over you know that we still have a, a a gradient for people with disabilities, um, and and we need to tackle that problem with ongoing determination and and, and, and develop increased programs, initiatives, and funding through Sport Ireland, and many of them have been put in place, but to expand them so through our local sport partnerships, uh, through our NGBs, through our capital expenditure model. That priority is given to disability in sport, uh, and to see that expand and continue. Uh, and it's my view, that, and it's, it's essential that we we make sure that uh, as many opportunities are, are available to people, and that where barriers are identified or audited, and um, that we that we in, intervene and provide the funding provisions to actually, uh, as I said, provide that opportunity. So we we reduce that gradient, uh, and it's important that we promote healthy lifestyles and participation for. And create that sense of identity and belonging for everybody and, and no no part of society um, because they happen to have a disability or not should feel excluded or or prevented from and uh, from from engaging in the sport that they love uh, and i believe that everyone no matter what their background or circumstances should have the opportunity to participate in sport and physical activity of their choosing uh, and we know there are so many benefits in that regard uh, and that's why i've said as i said earlier on in every funding stream that we have uh, and, 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 and in the sports action plan, it's to have a, an, an, a, an inclusion pillar of funding, uh, it's to have an innovation fund as well so that we, we, we can innovate to, to, to help people with disabilities in, in, in terms of the promotion of physical activity, but also through the national governing bodies. Um, and I know some of the data shows that, um, that where there's sedentary behaviour, we, we need to promote that, fit, that active lifestyle for many people. Um, but the the sports capital program, I know, has been a, a key pillar, and one of the principles is around universal design, for example, with equipment. So where a club or a body or association wants to get get access to funding, uh, we ensure that accessibility is a key priority, so that, um, so that accessible gym equipment 
uh, and one of the and I know Cara has been involved in that around guidelines for inclusion are, are, are key promotion as part of the sports capital program uh, and since 2014 over 1.3 million euro has been has been allocated to groups specifically catering for inclusion in sport including Cara as well um, and I know we, we need to not only embed the changes in terms of sports capital but also empower people with disabilities but also people who are involved in that sector in terms of uh, around around the around supporting people who are leaders and trainers and uh, and that we at all levels we actually support that so we empower people with disabilities and just on a separate note uh, in terms of the sports leadership group uh, a key priority <coughs> for us is the is is the is around the access for people with disabilities in sport uh, and that's a, when we publish the 2021 to 2023 uh, sports action plan uh, one thing i've sought to prioritize is uh, is this very issue and just say in a broader context as well as a government as part of the the program for government and we've obviously ratified the un convention for people with disabilities we've we set up, established a standalone eroptus committee for people with disabilities as well and we and to try and oversee the implementation of that so sport has a key role so ensure that the rights of people with disabilities and the opportunities for people with disabilities are are progressed and prioritized uh, and and then also that that's uh, continued and, and implemented on a broader context, something I'm uh, okay. passionate about. And uh, and I said I, I am delighted to work with everyone who's who's on the call today and, and, and on the panel and, and watching in. So thanks again. Okay. Um, thank you, Minister. Turning to Dr. Una May. Um, Una, it's um, you, like um, you're the CEO of Sport Ireland, uh, John Tracy, you've spent most of your life in elite sport. But it's probably fair to say that to you and Sport Ireland, participation is nearly more important at this stage, isn't it? Well, precisely, I suppose. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure where you get the bit that we're. That I am involved in the elite side, so my side of the house is very much the participation side. And although um, I think we, we're all motivated and inspired um, when we when we and we're, and we're thrilled that the Paralympics and the Olympics will be going ahead next year. And it gives us a great opportunity to, to, to be inspired by our role models that are out there. In order to have those role models, we need participation at all levels. And this is something we've worked really hard for. And it's been, well, it's been like the most incredibly challenging year for everybody, um, the whole population, not those, not just those in sport, but the sports sector has really come together and actually, you know, found ways to ensure that people can continue to participate in some form of physical activity insofar as they possibly can within the restrictions. And um, what, what I've been really pleased in, in, in recent years, we've, it's become quite normalised for us to, to have representation of, of a board member who's a twice Paralympian, um, Porik Moran, who works really hard on behalf of the, the, the disability sector. The um, expert group for return to sport this year included um, a member from CARA, we also had um, a specifically designed um, working group, a working group to look at the impact of the, the pandemic on the disability sector um, and, and how, how best they could be funded to support the return to sport um, for that group. So we, we've been tackling it from all areas and it's, it's become, as I said, a kind of a normalised part of what we do. We, we, we su supported significantly the disability sport and participation in disability sport and physical activity through um, not just our core programmes where we now have a full um, network of disability officers who, who also form a um, COVID uh, working group. We have a full network across the entire local sports partnership network, and we have a SIDO in every in every LSP, which is great now. Um, and they really work at that local level. Obviously, they've had to be innovative and creative in the last year to try and continue to, to create opportunities for people to be active. Um, but they have been they have been creative and innovative and have come up with really great solutions. Um, and I know it's been mentioned um, around the introduction of opportunities and exercise activities printing and so you know we've seen we've seen as I said great innovation we've seen vision sports developing um i suppose um vo voice described online exercise classes um we've seen initiatives to uh, increase the number of guides for people with vision impairments who want to take part in physical activities so just to go for a run um, where 
those of us who don't have a disability can just go out our front door and go for a run. But that um, the limitation that people with disabilities had where they, they, they needed somebody to come with them, we've been able to find solutions and vision sports have been able to come up with great solutions. So there's been lots of uh, creative solutions to try and maintain the levels of physical activity, which is really important. Um, we have, Una, we have Una, seen we have some habits seen... change over this year, haven't we? There's been a, a significant change in the way people access activity and perhaps a greater emphasis on the outdoors. Yeah, we have. We've seen people, um, I suppose there's been a shift naturally, unfortunately, because a lot of the team sports weren't able to operate throughout various levels of the restrictions. So people have shifted their focus towards more individual sports. And that's a trend we've been seeing in participation in, in the last number of years anyway. So it's it's good that people have seen these options available to them. And I think that during, it was mentioned earlier during the outdoors, the really, really important added value of being out doors both because of the the impact of the, the the covid virus but also in terms of people's mental health and well-being the the connection with the outdoors and connection with nature and the huge added value that can bring to people's participation in in um sport and physical activity outdoors so we've really encouraged that and i know that um Kira earlier had mentioned our work that we've been doing around the, the digital database to provide improved access to information but I think you also mentioned that you know people have discovered their own environment and their natural environment in which they, they live and maybe haven't been fully aware of what's available to them on their doorstep um so you know that's been really important for us that people have recognized that they do have access very locally even if it's just their garden and and that connection with nature and outdoors and how much that can add value to people's lives Yes, again and again, we're hearing that it's getting the word out, letting people know what's available is important. Um, Miriam Malone, the CEO of Paralympics Ireland. Miriam, it's not been the year you expected, has it? Not exactly, not exactly. Um, unfortunately, yes, so we were targeted and in gearing towards going to Tokyo this year in 2020, and that all came to a a halt at an earlier part of this year when it was announced that the games would be postponed in, in March, the end of March of 2020. So quite a um, challenge, particularly for the athletes who would have been, a number of whom would have been in the middle of their campaign to qualify at that stage, um, and when international sport just stopped. Uh, so for those athletes in particular who geared their lives literally towards um, this one major event, um, it was a huge adjustment. But to be fair to most of them, they are hugely resilient and they are determined. And the fact that the Games were postponed until 2021, and that now looks very, very positive. Um, so they were able to reset their goals and retarget and look at the opportunities that they could glean from an additional year of training and uh, gearing again towards 2021. So, yeah, so I must say the athletes sprung into action, the staff and the support services team were also great to spring into action and ensure that the supports were there. And, and actually across the board, um, across the sports industry, there was huge support. Um, I, I found that, you know, between Sport Ireland and the department and the OFI, ourselves, all the sports disability bodies as well, the sports organization bodies, all very much came together and um, really worked together very closely to support each other through this time, because it was unprecedented for all of us. So certainly, um, yes, a different year than we planned, but a lot of positives to come out of it too um, as we go through the year and continually adapt and, and gear up towards next year again. Well, we very much look forward to cheering on the athletes in Tokyo. But just broadening it out, you're also chair of the Disability Organisations Network. What impact has COVID had on the wider community? So... That, that particular group, the, the sports organisations, the disability sports organisations got together and just in December of 2019, so that group set up. And we initially anticipated that we would meet quarterly and really the focus was, was, was strategically looking at the role that we play across disability sport and trying to work together um, to see how we can work together more closely and, and cater for um, all athletes with a disability and seeing what gaps there were there. So that group actually ended up meeting throughout the pandemic time for nearly nearly tw every every two weeks or so as we um, worked through and adjusted through these challenges. And as Una 
May mentioned earlier, um, when Sport Ireland stepped in to provide that resilience fund, which was so readily um, welcomed by all of the sports organisations from the government and from Sports Ireland, we there was an additional um, focus, if you like, from this particular group. We were asked by Sport Ireland to um, to assess the impact, particularly across the disability sector in sports, um, and the and the NGBs joined us in that as well um, to to, to um, facilitate that working group. So we worked together as a group just to prepare a paper to really assess what impacts um, had been there. And, and we found across a number of areas, so HO or, or um, organizational, operational, finance, um, we found that in some, in a lot of areas, the, the, the impact of COVID-19 was, was probably a little bit more pronounced for some athletes with a disability who could, couldn't get out and participate. Um, there was also a big impact across that sector because they relied hugely on fundraising to, to carry out a lot of their activities, and that just wasn't possible during those times. Um, and, and others mentioned some particular, for some particular athletes, some who are more vulnerable than others, it just made it harder to get out. That's not the case across the board of all the athletes, but there were just significant impacts that COVID created for that particular community. So it was great to have the opportunity and to have all those voices and, and group of people working together to be able to um, to explain what those challenges were and the impacts were in the industry, so that could be taken on board on the greater picture by the government in Sport Ireland. So it was, it was a really welcome move and we're delighted to be able to do that. Thank you, Miriam. And staying with the wider community, we're going to talk next to the HSE and Sarah O'Brien. Uh, but first, we, we heard a bit earlier about this, this programme for uh, education and activity. Um, and we'd like to play just a short video, give people a taste of the programme before we talk to the HSE. Cara, with the support of the Health Service Executive, is developing an online physical activity education program for people with disabilities. The course is a six-week program delivered via six e-learning modules. The modules provide a combination of educational material and exercise sessions that focus on the benefits of physical activity. Cara is committed to bringing exercise and healthy living directly to people with disabilities. Embedding the importance of physical activity and sport across the disability sector. Supporting activity through instructor-led group exercise sessions filmed and directed by experts at Salasso. And reaching adult day services and residential care settings even in the most remote locations. The course features personalised content for engagement, supportive and encouraging language, and interactions for active learning. The course rollout is planned for quarter one of 2021. Cara has teamed up with Salasso Health Solutions to develop the online content for the Physical Activity Education Programme. Sarah O'Brien, you're the HSE's lead on healthy eating and active living. Uh, it looks like an excellent programme. Why has the HSE got involved in this? Hi, John. I suppose um, we've been working with CARA for the last number of years around uh, an initiative to support and, uh, I suppose, increase the um, capacity for uh, people with disabilities to participate in, in physical activity um, as a routine part of their, their everyday life. Um, so COVID at the beginning of at the beginning of this year we had we had trained um, staff working in ten uh, daycare centres around the 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 country to uh, to deliver the the program to the to service users and uh, they had started rolling out but uh, rolling it out but unfortunately once uh, the beginning of March hit all of that kind of went by by the wayside and you'll have heard um, Sarah there from St Michael's House speaking earlier around how many of those services with uh, Rian Carl, the um, the project worker in Cara, really worked really hard to uh, to to change direction and to ensure that uh, they were supported and enabled to continue the program with people with disabilities. Um, the 
at the at, in September then when we came back together and we and we looked again we saw that there was an opportunity here with the way how we deliver services have changed and how we've all had to change how we um how we work that there was an opportunity to move to a space where we would be able to provide that program to um directly to people with disabilities um in in their homes or in their daycare services without really, uh, having to it, it to be mediated through through staff for that so it, it allowed that much more direct engagement and, and direct delivery that's referenced in in the video there um i suppose in a way for for us as you kind of referenced earlier earlier when you're speaking with the minister um people with uh with disabilities for many reasons uh tend to not have as many um opportunities to participate in physical activity or feel that those opportunities aren't aren't there for them but the benefits of of physical activity uh in terms of physical health uh well-being overall are, are so great that it's really really important to us that um everyone in in the country in, in as much as possible gets an opportunity to participate and to engage so we have been working for a, a, a good number of years with with sport ireland supporting the um development of the sports inclusion disability officers and their program within the local sports partnership it's essential it's a it's a critical part of the infrastructure at local level for supporting um, participation, whether that is uh, organising and delivering programmes that are directly accessible to people in the communities, providing training to um, to volunteers in, in sports clubs and organisations to uh, ensure that uh, or to enable them to make their, um, their, their club or their services accessible more accessible for people and uh, so not it's not just about physical accessibility i suppose it is about that sense of being um being uh, a, a a an area or a place that is is welcoming and supportive and inclusive um so like it, it for all of those reasons it's, it's really important to um to the hsc to have um to support people with, phys with uh, disabilities to be physically active and to work with key partners like CARA and Sport Ireland around it. Thank you, Sarah. I'm conscious that we're, we're tight for time, so I'd like to bring in Neve Daffy, please, the CEO of CARA, uh, Disability Sport Ireland. Neve, we've heard there that 2020 was a challenging year, but there have also clearly been a lot of successes. Uh, yes, Noel, uh, thanks very much for the opportunity to join the panel of speakers this afternoon. Um, there certainly has, and I think it's very evident from the discussions um, this morning that there's been a huge amount of that, that word that's been used across the sector and probably globally is that resilience and commitment, and in particular to this sector, there is that commitment to ensure that we keep the agenda of sport and physical activity clearly on the table. Um, and, and I suppose for all of us involved in sport and physical activity, we have all adapted in particular over the last number of months, but it's given us a huge opportunity to collaborate more with many people who we wouldn't have had the chance to do so before, and in particular possibly to reflect on the work that we're doing and looking at other ways and means of how we can engage more with people with disabilities and support people with disabilities to lead active and healthy lifestyles. Certainly from our point of view, we've, we've had to adapt in numerous ways from bringing a lot of our programme to the online platforms with our training and education, and some of which have been mentioned earlier on as well. But it's all, I suppose, while there's been challenges presented to, to us across all our organisations, there has been opportunities. And I think it's now to be able to take those opportunities, reflect on them and look at how we can move into 2021 with a collective approach to continuing to ensure sport and physical activity opportunities are provided for people with disabilities. Absolutely. I mean, a day like today proves that we can reach people that we never reached before. A typical national seminar for CARA would reach maybe 250 people in the room and then, yes, a certain amount of people afterwards. But today we're reaching over 600 people from countries across the world. It's, it, we, we've managed to, to use this opportunity to get the word out. So I would say to you, if you had two or three key priorities for the early months of 2021, what would they be? 
I suppose the first priority is to keep doing what we're doing as a as a collective sector. And I think I know like Miriam would have mentioned it in terms of the disability sports sector coming together, probably probably stronger than, than ever. Is there a lot more collaborations happening across sport and physical activity for people with disabilities? So let's continue that momentum as we move into 2021. I refer back to Sarah Hughes. Um, conversation with us this morning and I suppose the, the innovation that hap has happened within disability services and that I suppose routine that has changed so much for people with disabilities within disability services. Sarah mentioned the importance of the staff that supported her and her team in delivering a, a program for people with disabilities and I think I suppose for us that we need to continue to look and see ways of, of supporting staff within healthcare services and within residential care services to be, I suppose, champions of sport and physical activity for people with disabilities and to connect back in with the sports sector to ultimately provide that partnership approach to ensuring people with disabilities can be aware of the opportunities but ultimately be supported to participate in those opportunities as well. Thank you, Neve. Um, we are running out of time. Uh, I'd like to have gone back to some of our other speakers, but Jack, Sarah, Miriam, Una, thank you very much for joining us. Neve, as CEO of CARA, perhaps you might like to say a few closing words. Yes, thanks, Niall. Um, and I'm conscious of time, so I, I'll keep this quite brief as much as I can. But I suppose before we come to a close on what has been a wonderful morning of discussions and learning and sharing, I do want to take this opportunity to thank a few key individuals Special thanks to you, Minister Chamber, for taking your time to join us this morning. Um, and in particular, thank you and your department for that continued commitment to sport and physical activity for people with disabilities. That commitment is obviously evident within the policies and the national sports policy, but it has also been clearly demonstrated in the many developments that have happened over the past couple of months, in particular, the discussions around return to sport and reopening of sport for, for people with disabilities, the action within the programme for government, and also the, the mention, or what you mentioned previously in relation to the investment and the inclusive, inclusive element embedded within those investment funds. We in CARA certainly look forward to working with you and your department over the next number of years in continuing to support the implementation of the national sports policy, and in particular, the key actions relevant to sport and physical activity for people with disabilities. Earlier this year, um, as with all of us, we started to look at how we're going to deliver on our, our, our objectives for 2020. And we certainly were looking at making sure that we could bring our national seminar and our end of year event in conjunction with Sport Ireland to the wider audience. While we've had many challenges uh, across the sports sector and within our organisations, we have had many opportunities and today is no different. We have been able to reach over 600 individuals joining us today from across the globe. And it's been it's so important for us to be able to contribute to continued learning, sharing and collaborations that must continue into the future in relation to sport and physical activity for people with disabilities. Taking the time for joining us today and I hope there's many take home messages, inspirations and hopefully a chance to connect with some of our, our guests and our speakers as well following the event. As with all our events, we strive to ensure a high standard of delivery. And we were quite nervous moving into the space of an online delivery when our, we're at, I suppose, the, the mercy of the, the technical platforms as well. But I think today we can, we can look back and, and, and look at the content and the, the sharing and the learning that happened to be very proud of this morning's activities. But in particular, we take great comfort each year when our director, Niall O'Flynn, and our ambassador, Joanne Cantwell, so generously give us their time to ensure that they steer the ship with such professionalism and such style. And would like to thank you very much for taking that time again, Niall and Joanne. Special thanks to our keynote speakers, Ellen and James, and all our guests this morning who have shared knowledge, expertise, and your experiences and had, have added huge value to the discussions that we've had. Behind the scenes, and in particular today, behind the screens, is a bunch of people who are at the, beat, the beating heart of our organization. Cara's, Cara's team, Brenda, Orne, Darren, Rian, Joe, Aoife and Paul have continued to display such passion and drive for achieving our vision and in particular have had to adapt it in so many ways to ensure we could deliver on our objectives for 2020. Darren and Paul in particular, I would like to pay special mention for the trip for this, this morning's event with the support of our fantastic com our production company, Catapult. Our team expands to our wonderful board who have continued to guide and direct us, even in these great times of change, always ensuring to protect our team, our reputation and prioritise what is important for us and our organisation. Finally, I would like to express our utmost appreciation to Sport Ireland and to the HSE for continuing to place your trust in us as an organisation that is committed to deliver. We look forward to continuing our partnership with you and your teams 
in supporting and guiding policy development and implementation that will further enhance sport and physical activity opportunities for people with disabilities. Today, International Day for People with Disabilities, I believe we can take great comfort that there is an appetite for inclusion across the sector. We're delighted to announce that we have over 1,000 signees of the National Sports Inclusion Disability Charter, and we're also encouraged by the findings of Sport Ireland's 2019 Irish Sports Monitor, which has indicated a need across the, the, the clubs across our country, seeking more support on how they, they can be an in inclusive for people with disabilities. Now at a time where sport and physical activity has gained a higher platform of importance, we must seize this opportunity as a sector. We must reevaluate how we can continue to support people with disabilities to be physically active and how we can continue to engage and listen to the needs and the challenges that people with disabilities experience in relation to leading active and healthy lifestyles. And collectively, we look forward to working with you and your organisations in putting disability sport and inclusive physical activity at the heart of our nation. Many thanks to you all for making today possible. I would like to take this opportunity to wish you and your families a wonderful Christmas and we certainly look forward to engaging with you throughout next year and looking at how we can continue to bring the platform of the National Seminar for Inclusion to you, to your organisations and to the wider sector. Thanks Niall. And thank you to Neve as well. And what that does is bring our first ever Cara live cast to a close. I hope that you all got something out of it and that you all enjoyed it as well. And I also hope that this time next year, most of us, although obviously not all of us, will be in the same room talking about a year that provided quite fewer challenges than 2020 did. Yes, thank you all very much for joining us from all over the world. A special thanks again to our two interpreters, Alison and Katrina. Thank you for all you've done today. Thanks for joining us, folks. Um, if it's not too early, indeed, <laughs> happy Christmas to you all. Safe home. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.